So, hope everyone can hear me. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Fran Westmoreland um, and tonight we will be making El Bandito. Um, this is an altered box. Sorry. Yeah, this is um, an altered box um, frame. These are from the Relics and Artifacts range. Um, I haven't got the number right on me at the minute, but that's what we're going to be making. Can you see? Let's get a little bit closer. So we're using one of the cool um, resin skulls as well. We're going to alter him into El Bandito. We're also going to be using um, a shabby sheep treasure bird. We're going to be turning him into a parrot. Can you see that? We've got some yummy beads that way. Some yummy beads and some treasure. So we're going to be really rocking up this frame. Thank you, Carrie. Yep, yeah, ahoy. <laughs> Ship ahoy with El Bandito. Okay, right. So I shall just put him to one side. <laughs> right, so to start. I have pre, uh, actually, yeah, okay, I'll do it. before I move down. I'll just show you that I've pre painted this uh, wooden tray. So this is a larger, you get them in sets of three, and this is the larger one I'm using tonight. Um, and so before I just move down, I'll just show you that I've painted it uh, with uh, premature ball paint sand, and I've mixed in a little bit of the golden shortboard paint as well so it's given it quite a nice warm perhaps can't see it very well there a nice warm beige yellow right so I'm gonna move down obviously don't get seasick because it's the theme of the evening so excuse me not okay is that alright can everyone see it alright Great. So, pre painted the chalkboard frame, um, and I have pre cut a piece of car, uh, well, it's watercolour paper to fit in the centre of the frame. Chalkboard paint's awesome, you need to try it, it is absolutely fun. So, what we're going to do. So, I'm going to be using this. Um, Bloom Ricket uh, stencil on top. It's a nice chalky matte finish. Um, that's how it dries. Right. So get my modelling paste. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to be using some uh, Art Basics modelling paste through the stencil. So this is step one. So I'm just gonna everyone see okay if I hand it away, that's better. So I'm just gonna pop that through the stencil. Nice even layer. Everyone see okay? Yeah, modeling paste is fab for adding dimension. It's a must have craft item. Right, so I'm just going to lift this up. Fingers crossed that that's worked okay. So hopefully, yeah, you can see the fabo dimension that we've got there with the modelling base and the stencil. Okay, I'm just going to give this a quick wipe so I don't get all glued up like I normally do. Right. It's so hot, I think it's slightly worried that's going to dry on the mask, but never mind. Right, so I can clean it later. Okay. 
this fab texture. Really, really cool. So, next. So I'm going to have to dry this, I'm afraid. So please forgive me and my slightly noisy heat gun. Cleaning stencil is a horrible job. That's true. Paintbrushes, palette knives, not fun. Right, so that is dried off. So next we're going to add some colour to our piece of watercolour paper. So what I am going to use is uh, the watercolour pencils, this is the uh, basic version, they're anything but the basic, they're absolutely fab, you need to get some because they're just awesome, you can use them, and I constantly use them on nearly every project, so right, I have got um, an old bathroom tile you can see there, And I've got, I'm just using a, a wide paintbrush for this, wide soft bristle. Normally I use my Prima watercolour brush, but I want a nice, thick, wide brush for this one, right? So I'm just going to put a bit of water on the tile, and then I'm going to use this cool orange, still cleaning stencils would be the best thing ever, <laughs> and then I'm just going to scribble onto my tile. Okay. I'm gonna add a bit of water. Add a bit more. And then okay, I'm just gonna Water. Slightly whitewash over the watercolour paper and the, st the uh, stenciling details are just done. This is going to be like a really subtle effect, but it's really, really, really nice. So I'm going for um, a bit of a sort of gradient ombre look, that's why I've got thing about ombre, so I'm just going to use the uh, red pencil from the basic range, I'm just going to do the same thing, so I scribble on the tile, it's quite fun actually, yeah that's very very true, we barely need anything, it's a really very really good pop of colour, and then I'm going to add the red. So in theory, I want it darker at the bottom of the red. A bit more water. Mix everything. Alright, I think that's quite good. So I just left that up. Hopefully, you'll be able to see. But turn it to an angle. 
it is actually darker than it looks on there. Okay, can you see that? Yes, you can use your craft mat to do the um, scribbling uh, idea. Right, so I'm just going to move my tile somewhere. Push in there. So I'm just going to give this a, a quick blast with the heat gun just so it's dry for sticking. Yeah, it's a fun way to do it for sure. Pop that piece of paper to one side. That goes somewhere relatively safe. Uh, right, so next, back onto the frame. So, what I'm going to do next is make sure that palette knife is clean and it's not got full modeling paints. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good idea to use a palette. Awesome idea. Right. Next, we are using some three, oh, three D gloss gel, and we are also using some of the our uh, ingredients glass beads, and this colour is plum. All right. So this is actually a really nice colour. It's like um. More like an amber, if you can pick that up. <laughs> Thank you. I'm messing, messing that. Yeah. <laughs> and walls and desks, yeah, everything looks like that. Right, so, Art Basics 3D Gloss Gel. What I'm going to do is on the um, outer perimeter. That's the right way to say it. I'm going to spread the gloss gel. So I want a thickish layer, probably about a couple of mil. So I'm just going to go around like that. Yes, 3D gloss gel is great for uh, gluing down thick, heavy embellishments, and you will see later on that we will use it again, but in a slightly different context as well. So you'll see how that works. I'm just going to. It doesn't really matter if there's some that goes excess goes over the edge because a it dries transparent, and b it's going to get covered anyway. So it's all good. <laughs> the secret safe house. because I want my beads to stick down well. I think a little bit more. Mm. I think that's good. Right, now, I 
I'm going to get um, my bead tray uh, in the vain hope of catching some of the beads for the next step. So, bear with me. I do need to try 3D paste, it's awesome. It's one of those things that you'll just use for everything. Alright, so, next, we are sprinkling the beads on top, so I'm just going to dab them in, if there's some that are loose and they come off after drying, that's fine. So long as we get the majority stuck down properly. I'm going to end up with beads everywhere anyway, so it was slightly better than using a piece of paper to catch them with, which has probably been even more disastrous than this idea. <laughs> they just seem to bounce everywhere. No matter what you do. Right, that. So. Tapping most of it set off. And I shall move those aside. And attempt to put those away later. Hi, Aswin. Hi, Pam. Right, so you can see what we've got going on there. So we've created lots and lots of funky texture with those beads and the modelling paste. Uh, sorry, the 3D gel to adhere them with. So next, what we're going to do is just give this a dry so that sets everything nicely before I move on to the next step. So forgive me while I crank the glue gun up. Yes, that is a very good point, Harry. I want to make sure this is quite dry and nicely set for the next step. Right, okay. Just tip me with this people. So that's all pretty well dried, I think. 
so I'm just going to knock off any of the excess beads that are around the edges. Some will come off on the next step, but that's fine. Right, so next. I'm going to use a uh, another chalkboard paint. So this is going to use Sea Breeze. This is a gorgeous tropical blue. And I'm also going to use Ginger Coral Colour Bloom. But I'm using this uh, as a paint tonight, as you will see. So, what I'm going to do is put that to one side. I'm just going to go and start highlighting over my beads. This is a nice effect. You're just giving them a nice shimmery glaze with the ginger coral. You will see the pearlescent pop. Right, so what I can you see what's Going on there. So what I'm going to do also is with a slightly drier brush, I'm just going to go around the edges and give those a bit of a, a bit of a white wash or ginger coral wash, should I say? A bit in the fingers a bit. I put the uh, beads into 3D gloss gel and then just heated it up with my heat gun to set them so I haven't used any gesso or anything. So I'm just rubbing over with my hands and so my hands nice and covered in ginger coral, but that's okay. This is good to do, I say, with a dry brush, not a really wet brush, because I just want a bit of a wash. Right, so I'm just going to give that a very quick heat gun blast. the excess. Right, so next we are going in with the uh, sea breeze. Now I don't know if the camera will pick this up but it's got a gorgeous pearly glaze now to it. It's really really cool. Right, so I'm going to use my bigger brush. There. And again, I'm just going to go around, as you can see, I'm going to go around the edge. And I'm going to go on top of the bead. So, basically, same process as we've used with the ginger coal. Actually, I might just go in there and start bobbing it with my finger. 
do it the messy way as usual. Everybody needs to be brushing parts. on you stream <laughs> yeah finger painting that's a, a favourite of mine the messiest way to do it I will do it right so Go over with that. Do my loose beads are just clicking off now nicely. I shall be picking those up for days. A bit of tap. Right, so you can see what effect we've got from using the paint and the uh, colour bloomers paint. Try and show you from the side. It's a little bit difficult to see. Okay. So, I'm going to move all these things just to get really glued to me. By the end of the show, I'm going to have like beads all glued up my arms. <laughs> so, look, I'm just going to give this a quick dry and then we shall get sticking our watercolour paper. Thank you. So, I'm going to stick our watercolour paper in the middle of the frame. So, I just want to get rid of all these excess beads so we've got a nice level surface to uh, stick down. Blobs in there, and that's going to go in the side. A rose bead. Right. So hopefully this will fit in nicely. Catch or stuff, or some catch or snag anything. But I think that's a pretty good go. So, if you can see, our frame is being, ah, this take shape, and you can just see the um, ombre watercolour details there. Right. So, next we are going to get our, I don't know what this is really, ship's wheel. So this is a um, piece of, out of some sort of filter, so it was basically like a junk plastic uh, piece of a filter really, so um, you will probably be able to get something similar in a DIY shop uh, if you so wanted. Thank you. Um, and I have painted this in um, black heavy gesso, so I've pre-painted this. Right, so 
what we're going to do next, I'm running that rapidly, I'm running out of room, is see a B there as you can see. Ugh. Right. So I've cut this little um uh compass wheel from a piece of paper. It's um it was actually a scrap of my vintage vanity uh pad. So I'm just gonna stick this in the middle of the wheel. So this just makes it a little bit easier to stick El Bandito onto it as we'll see <laughs> bead carnage, yes quite. Right, so that's just going to get stuck in the middle, like so, and then I have got um, some pieces of wood, so it's like chunky twigs, um, which are easy to get hold of, and what we're going to do is I'm just going to stick those on the the points, however you want to say, of the wheel. Okay, so I'm going to use two things for this. We are using um, some hot glue, which will, and I'm going to use a blob of the 3D gel as well. So the hot glue will just grab, grab it on and the 3D gel will hold it on because if you use hot glue things tend to sort of come off eventually but sometimes you need a quick grab glue if that makes sense so I'm going to put a blob on each and then a blob of the gel in the middle right. so hopefully that will stick okay These sticks are just um, standard thick chunky twigs so if you've got twigs in your garden or whatever you can cut them up or you can um, buy things like that in shops so they're just standard twigs basically or branches chunky twigs yeah No, it's summer I've just had these in my stash for a long time so. I always use bits of wood and land and things like that, no matter what time of year it is. <laughs> right, so, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Two blobs of hot glue, one blob of gel in the middle. Sorry, I need to glue that in quick before it sets. Hot glue that is. So basically I'm just going to go around with that. Yeah, absolutely. Twigs and sticks, very easy to get hold of. Pretzel sticks. I could <laughs> you could try using some pretzel sticks for an edible El, El Bandito if they wanted. That would be quite easy. Right. Inedible ships wheel. Right, we've got one more to go. That down there. Right. So we have got our wheel taking shape. So next what I'm going to do, and hopefully I can do this quickly or relatively quickly, is I've got some um, standard burlap string. Okay. And what I'm going to do, if you can see it on the original El Bandito, is just wrap some string around the uh, twigs. 
or sticks or masts or I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what this is but it looked cool and nautical so I just went with it wheel sort of like a ship's wheel right so let's see so I'll probably just do a couple just so you can get the gist of what we're doing Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just wrap them around each twig. Ship wheels, yes. I don't know. I'm just making this up as I go. I don't know what a ship wheel is. Ship steering wheel, compass. I don't know. <laughs> Don't listen to me. Right. Just tie that at the back. Oh, that's bad luck. Right. So, I've done a couple, so you're going to get the gist of, of what it is rather than sort of me sit watching me tie bits of string around the twig you get you get where, where that's going right so next we shall move that aside next what we're going to do is El Bandito so El Bandito will be composed from various things what are we making we're making this altered just show you, altered frame El Bandito okay so we are going to use this. You see that this cool skull from the um, archival cast ancient soul uh, variety. So let's get it out of his packaging. Okay. Right. So what we are going to do with El Bandito is I'm using the um, Julie Nutting Skin and Hair Tones watercolour pencil set. They are fabulous. The casts, very, very, very cool. Exactly. If you've got a cricket, you could chip, cut the chipboard ships wheel. That would be an awesome idea. Right. So I'm just going to give him a bit of a um, an aged weathered look so let's see I colours so I've got my Prima watercolour pencil which is fabulously awesome and you, actually I want the yellow so let's see that one will be better go with that. Alright, so I'm just rubbing my watercolour pencil with my brush and then I'm just going to give him a bit of a coat, make him look all weathered. I'm just sort of slapping this on really, it's not going to be particularly neat. I'm going to pay special attention to his uh, teeth as well, I want those nice and yellow. I'm going to go in with a bit of brown in his eye sockets. So I'm just mixing that in a bit. You see I'm using that hand as a palette. Let's 
so you can colour loads and loads of things with the watercolour pencils. They are fabulously versatile. So we've already used them to colour our background paper and now we've used them to tint El Bandito. So I'll just give this a quick dry and then I will show you uh, what it looks like. So this is just to set the watercolour pencils. Right, so if I hold the skull up, it's probably going to be a little bit difficult to see. But he is tinted. And also, while I'm at it, I'm just going to go do his teeth a little bit as well. So I forgot to do those. Got some nice black teeth. It's looking good. Okay, so you can, you can see his teeth. <laughs> okay. Right. So next, we are giving. Oh, I've got beads stuck on me. I'm giving El Bandito his um, eye patch. Right, so for his little eye patch, I have got just this tiny little piece of fabric, which is actually denim, which I painted with a uh, black gesso and some. This was actually um, a off cut from the um, Resist Canvas Borders. So it was just one of the little pieces in between that I'm just using to, for his eye patch. So. And I've just coloured that in with black again. Right, so glue. So I'm just going to work out where I want his patch going. Right, so there it looks. Okay. And I'm just going to put a bit of glue on. So. Exactly. <laughs> these were sat there for ages, and then I just grabbed one, and I just thought, "Oh, these will be perfect for um for this purpose." So, any random bits on your desk, you see, there's all the useful, and there's all the reason why you keep them. Right. So, I'm just gonna check if that is stuck down properly. And then if you get rid of this stuff you actually realise that you need it, that's why you just keep keeping and keeping and keeping everything. Yeah, exactly. They're so they're great because you can use the actual borders and use the bits in between as well. So <laughs> exactly. That's a great idea. So you can see now El Bandito is taking shape. Okay. So I'm going to give him a um, crystal eyeball. Okay, I'm going to pop a little bit of glue in there to hold that in. So these are ridiculously fun to uh, decorate or do as you wish. I love them. Try to glue his eyeball. Let me use a pencil. 
every time I try and stick it in, it sort of comes into the thing. Right, that's good. So, just move that. Elbow and detail is a crystal eyeball, if you can see that. Yes, yeah, so that's really cool, the uh, crystal, the crystallized skull. Very cool. You can do some absolutely awesome things with those. Right. So, next. El Bandito's banner. Bandana, even, not his banner. So, I have got some um, plain black fabric there, so this is just a, another off cut. And what I'm going to do is glue. I want some fast grab glue for this, I'm just going to put some glue on his head. And then stick that in there. Right, so you can see with a couple of twists. He's got his bandana on, so I'm just gonna use some um, hot glue just to sort of secure this down a little bit. I'm just twisting it just to get it how I want it. I'm really hoping I don't glue my finger to anything because that's going to hurt. Right, a little bit more there. Right, so if you can see, our pirate friend has got his bandana on. So I'll just move him to one side now. So I'm going to give him a final look at detail. Um, so I'm using um, gold mica powder. Now you can mix this with um, some soft gel if you wish, but I just want to do this quickly so I'm just going to highlight some of his teeth with a bit of the water, some watercolour pen and the gold mica. So, <coughs> excuse me. If you can see, if I hold it a little bit closer that way, you can see some of the hints of his gold teeth there. If you look on the live with Prima site as well, you'll get um, obviously the better pictures and sort of see all the details and up close. So that is. The main part of El Bandito done. So next what we're going to do is move on to some wings. So if you can see what I've done is I have used the Bloom wing stencil. So I've used this, yeah, <laughs> yeah, gold teeth are awesome. Uh, this particular wing of this stencil. This is a really, really fab cool stencil. You see all these different wigs. Yep, can you see that? All these different wings on there. It's fab. So what I've done is I just drew around that with a pencil and then cut it out and then I have blobbed some um, modelling paste on. So I've done pre-done this one and I'll just show you what I've done with this one. So this was uh, drawn around and cut out. Uh, and 
paste, so modeling paste again, palette knife, palette knife there, good, going good, just give that a quick wipe. Hi everyone, right, so, yep, you can see that well, so I'm just going to get a little bit of the paste, and then, I'm going to spread onto the wing. This is modeling paste. Right, so we need a little bit. Right there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add texture by just dabbing my palette knife into the gel. There's Modeling paste, sorry. So you can see, I will try and show you the effect we've got there. And it's going to be hard to see because white is really hard to pick up. But we, you will hopefully see when I start adding some colour, the texture, the colour will pick the texture up. Right, so heat gun. So you have to brace yourself, I'm afraid. So that's dried and next get my colour bloom. So I'm using a uh, gold foil colour bloom for this, so I'm gonna give it a little shake and get me nice to going. Jingle jingle. Then quick spritz. Wipe that up so I don't cover everything in it. So I'm just going to give that a quick dry with my heat gun again. So, I'm just show you if it will pick up a little bit of uh, no. It's really hard to pick it up. Ah, you can see a little bit there. So you can add it. the colour bloom starts picking up those peaks that we made with the palette now. So I'm using some uh, black heavy gesso. And. wet white. So I'm just gonna mix it on my hand, obviously, hand of the palette. And then I'm just gonna go over the wing so it's just highlighting little parts again and giving it a little bit of an aged look with the black. So hopefully just my hand. You can see that there. So that's what we've got with our wing, right? So we've got two wings now for El Bandito. Right. So next, 
back to our wheel. Just move that. Get our bat Get my other wing. And what I'm going to do next, so I'm going to use my, um, I'm going to use hot glue for this actually, is, move that aside, I'm going to stick the wings onto the back of El Bandita's head, okay? And that's steaming hot glue on there. Our bandy is rocking on now. Okay, so back to our um, wheel, jibs wheel, whatever you want to call it. Same principle as what we've done before. I'm going to use 3D gloss gel and uh, hot glue. So again, the gloss gel is going to really stick it down well. The, the hot glue will just grab it. Quick grab, so you get a blob of gel in the middle, you see that? Now I'm just going to blob some glue around and pop it in, hopefully this will work okay. Right, so let's see. Stuck there. So, yeah, that's the way around. <laughs> the black piece is um, a filter part, so it's like a plastic um, old junk piece of filter. Um, so, which was actually from a DIY store, so that's what that actually was. And I've painted it, it was white, and I've painted it in a uh, black gesso, so I hope that helps. Right, so next I have got, um, <laughs> that's it, sure me too. So I've got a little um, pirate flag that I've uh, printed from the internet and I'm just going to stick that. I'm just going to give it a little bend just so it gives it a little dimension. And then I'm going to stick that on my uh, wooden stick twig. Last grab. Yeah, that's it. It's just a sort of it may have I can't actually recall what the plastic filter was supposed to be for originally, but I think they're pretty easy to get. Or something very similar anyway. Okay, so you can see he's got his No, it's not um a stove coil, it's definitely a plastic filter thing from a fan or something, maybe. I couldn't tell you exactly, but yeah. It is upcycled, amazing junk, we've got twigs and uh, filter parts. <laughs> yeah. Right, so next right so what we're going to do is decorate our wheel up a little bit so um i have pre-painted a um one of the shabby sheep treasures resin birds um item is eight nine two four seven zero uh, the full list of everything i've used will be on the live stream site just so i can let uh, you there so I took this bird and you can sort of can you see what yeah 
So I've painted that with um, the chalkboard paint golden. Yeah, golden. And I've used some uh, ginger coral and some watercolour pencils on that the, from the basics. Okay, so you can see what I've done there. So that's been pre-painted. They are fab, those birds, and it's, this one's perfect because it looks like a parrot. Um, right, so we've got, we have got that. We've also got some yummy flowers. So let's have a look what we've got. Excuse me, I'll reach. Right, so I've got a selection of flowers. Um, these are aqua, I hope you can see them. Yes, because they are gorgeous. They're like watercolour um, flowers, and these are aquarelle. I believe they're called, and they're beautiful. And that's one set that we're using. We're also using some debutante flowers. So those ones are Penelope. These are so useful. Very, very cool indeed. And some, um, I forget what these ones are called. Hopefully, Carrie will be able to sort you out with that one. Flamingos. <laughs> yeah, a flamingo could work. I mean, parrots are more piratey, but a flamingo would be cool. Resin mermaids would be awesome, actually. I would love that. Oh, just think what you could do with that. Anyway, so, got me flowers. Right, so I've got to decide what flowers I'm going to use. Hmm. I think we'll go, I think we'll go peachy again. So I'm going to use, um, oh, the, the little birds were fab. I think they're discontinued now. But yeah, I love those. They're so, so useful for little tiny ones and bigger ones, which was, they were both awesome. Right, so we're going to stick some flowers down and then we are going to stick, uh, the parrot down. If anybody would like to give the parrot a name, feel free because he doesn't have one. El Bandito has a name if the parrot doesn't, so feel free to uh, suggest what we can call him. So I'll turn this round so you can see some flowers going on. Yes, they're a Spanish name for parrot. If anybody's got any suggestions, that would be awesome. Something that goes with El Bandito. Aha, uh -huh. <laughs> that's quite good. Oh, I love Pedro. Pedro the parrot. Pedro the parrot and El Bandito. I love that. I think he's going to be Pedro. <laughs> that's awesome. That's very really cool. I think he's a boy parrot. He looks, he looks like a boy. So I think I'm going for Pedro at the minute. But keep your suggestions coming in. And someone Google what is Spanish for parrot. That would be quite amusing. You can learn, some, you can learn things in more ways than one. Like with Prima. Yeah, we need to do that. So, I'm going to get distracted with my flowers. I'm going to glue my finger or something. Is it? Interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Let me just see what's going on with this. I think I should put in these bones now. Okay. It's hard to do a flower arrangement quick, I found. But I don't think that's too bad considering I did that quite quickly. Okay, so we've got some flowers. Pedro the punked up parrot. Oh, I'm loving that. 
Pedro the Punked Up Parrot and El Bandito. He needs an eye patch. I should have given him an eye patch. Oh well, maybe later. <laughs> okay, right, so I'm going to stick Pedro down. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm using a, actually, I'm going to use hot glue for this and 3D gel and hot glue. So the 3D gel in the middle. Interesting fact. Need a little bit more glue under there. Right, so you can see our wheel is taking place now. Oops, what are we doing? Okay, so next step. So we're going to leave our wheel to one side now and we're going to concentrate on the frame. Let me find where I put the frame. <laughs> we've got organised chaos. Right, so back to our frame again. We are going to right 3D gel again. So we're using 3D gel. Let's move these flowers out of the way so I don't destroy them. And this is easiest with your finger, to be honest. I mean, you can use your um, paintbrush, but I'm just gonna. Interesting, right? So, what I'm going to do is going to go in my finger and I'm going to start just daubing some uh, 3D gel in the inside of the frame. So, rather messily with my lucky fingers. So I'm just going to concentrate mainly on the two top corners. Hopefully you can see what's going on there. It is easier to just use your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> if in doubt, big fingering. My hands are all constantly covered in gunk one way or the other. They're either stained or they've got glue residue on, and yeah, if I give up on them being clean or having nice nails, and <laughs> occupational hazard. <laughs> right, so I'll just show you the original El Bandita to show you what's going on, what we're going to be creating with this. So, I've got a little bit of Actually, I'm going to put it in that corner. Yeah. Right, I think that's good enough. I just need to get my fingers a quick wipe before I glue myself to something. Yeah, that's it. You trust the tool, you're guaranteed to not lose. So, next, I am using the uh, Memory Hardware Curl. So, these are absolutely gorgeous. They're really um, heavy, I think. Forgive me if I'm mistaken, but I think they're glass. They are really good quality pearls. So, they're not like cheap and plastic. They are really good quality. So, what we are going to do next is I'm just going to start blobbing some of these pearls into the 3D gel. So we've got like treasure then. El Bandito stolen treasure. <laughs> so I'm going to concentrate primarily on the corners.
thank you. I did enjoy that uh, creating the Einstein diagram. So the 3D gel will really set this really, really well. You want a good strong adhesive when you're using things like heavy pearls, metal or wood. Right. A little bit more there. So you can see what I'm doing. It's actually so warm in here, my gel drying instantly. It doesn't happen very often. Right, so. El Bandito's treasure. Well, I'll see you. Right. So. I'm um, using some uh, glitter from, hopefully Kerry can tell you exactly what um, what the name of the pack is, I forget, but it's gold glitter basically, from the art ingredients line I believe, I'm going to put a little bit of glitter in the corner, so this is just covering up some of the gel. Okay. No. And I'm also using some um, art ingredients, art sugar in charcoal as well. Bye, Janelle. And I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that on my fingers because I just want a little tiny bit of contrast. I don't want to cover the gold up. So, I'm just going to set that with my heat gun. Blow glitter everywhere. Okay, so hopefully that's set well enough. So you can see, hopefully, El Bandito's sparkly treasure. Stolen sparkly treasure, I may have. Right, so next. What we are going to do is take my wheel. So next, we're going to adhere. Our wheel, ship's wheel, El Bandito's wheel, however you want to say, onto the frame. So, let's just see where I'm going to put it. Okay, so I'm going to go that way. So for ease and speed, I'm afraid I'm going to use um, some hot glue, but I would recommend if you were doing anything like this at home to use something like the 3D uh, gloss or matte gel, just because it will stick properly, but I'm just 
trying to get this glue down quickly, basically. So. Yeah, I'm covered in glitter now. I look like a fairy or something. <laughs> it's going everywhere. Yeah, I've covered my legs, my arms, everything. So, El Bandito's wheel, ship's wheel is now stuck down onto the frame. So, we've got a few more little bits of decoration to do. Okay. Use it, so I'm just going to pop that to one side actually. Right, so I'm going to use these um, cool uh, vellum flowers, okay? So you can see we've got one on there. I'm sure, Carrie will tell you the name and number. Because I've forgotten. So I'm just going to uh, I'm going to take the middle out of the flower first. Thank you. Right, so use that. Put that to one side. That can be used later. And I'm also using a um, junkyard finding ship part. So we're going to be using this this bottom one even. Thank you, Carrie. I thought they were called sunset, but I couldn't remember exactly which ones. Right, so next. The 3D gel comes back. Okay, I'm just going to glob a bit in the middle. Then I'm afraid the finger's coming back. So, sort of. Spread it around a bit. Wipe my finger. Wow, a glitter cleaner. That might be actually quite useful. <laughs> exactly, we need to know what this is. Magic glitter cleaner. Right, so I'm just going to stick my ship's part in the middle of the flower. Okay. And I'm going to bring my art ingredients gold glitter again. And then I'm just going to just sprinkle over so that I've got more glitter doom to come. But sprinkle over where the overlapping uh, 3D gel is, if that makes sense. To give it a bit of spangle. So I'm just going to tap that off there. It's going to blow everywhere. So that's what we've got. So if you watch this part, it is quite cool to see what happens. I hope you can see it. Right. So if you can see what's happening to the flower, if I heat, heat that up. So, this is so cool. Basically, the um, the decoration that was already on the flower is cooked up with the heat. So, can you see that? Just a little bit closer. Okay. That is really fun, cool technique to do. <laughs> really simple. I think it looks quite cool and awesome. Right, so it looks really effective, doesn't it? It's so cool. I love them. <laughs> Those are like sea urchin or something. There's my trusty pink eagle. Magic. Right, so what we're going to do next is basically we're just going to sort of finish compiling um, the decorations on this, basically. So I'm just going to work out where I want to put this flower. It's quite big. Mm -hmm. I don't know 
of the treasure room. Go there. It does. Absolutely, you can spray it as well. But um, I don't really get time. But spray would be a very cool, neat thing to do. Okay, so I'm just gonna hot glue this down. Just gonna scrunch it up a little bit. So I'm going to bring my flowers back again. So I'm using some um, flowers from the Garden Fable collection. So you can see these are gorgeous as well. So you can see the beaded centre. They are beautiful. Hopefully you can see them. But they are gorgeous. And that's all you need to know. So I'm going to pick a ooh, pink, pale pink, I don't know, green. Ooh, I'm going to go for green, I think. So, the green one, so the one of the aquarelle flowers going on there. Hmm. Use a mini debutante flowers. Have a green one, I think. So if you can see, the Bandito frame is now rocking on. So you can see the flower that we've just done there, hopefully. There's the glitter. So as a final um, few little bits and bobs that we can do. So I've got some, I just need these fans out of the way. So I've got some um, mica flakes. So these are gold leaf mica flakes. So they look like treasure, more of a little treasure. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use a paintbrush for this. Not my finger. Which is a surprise. So I've got a bit of the 3D gel again and I'm just gonna use my hand with a palette and just put a little bit of the uh, gel on do a few little details towards the end now That'd be quite cool if I've got some in it. So I'm going to give a little sprinkling of Mica Flakes. So you can see we've added some more spangle there and shimmer. And of course, it looks like El Bandito's stolen money practically. So I'm not going to heat set that um, because I'm just going to save some time. So hopefully, it should be alright and it won't all come off. So, final uh, step I've got some matte paper. I believe this was from the uh, Vintage Vanity 
A4 pad, which I think I forgot to put on my list, so if Carrie can amend that, that would be cool, but um, yeah, so I'm just going to rip these strips, you can see, and then we're going to crunch it up. Gold nuggets, that's it. So I'm going to use a bigger piece. Okay. Scrunching again. My first piece is too small. And then use actually I'll I'll do it the other way I'll do it the easy way around. I normally do things the most difficult way around. <laughs> So I've got my Prima watercolor pencil, my Prima watercolor pencil, and my Prima watercolor pen, and I'm just gonna rub that over the nib, and then I'm just you can I don't know if you can be able to see or not, but I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to write oh, ahoy. So you may be able to see it, and then also just along the edges, I'm just gonna make it look a bit aged and warm. So I think it's gonna be quite difficult to see. So I go from no. Uh, you see, you can kind of see a bit of a scribble going on. As I say, if you look at the pictures on the live with Prima site, you'll be able to see things more clearly. It's a little bit hard via the webcam. Right, so I'm just going to stick this down. <laughs> Over the stick. Do it's told. Right. And that is El Bandito. Old box ray. So hopefully you can see all these details. I don't think you can read the ahoy very well. But hopefully you get the gist of it. Hold it off a little bit more. Okay, so that is El Bandito finished and done. So I'm hoping that you enjoyed the show tonight. If anybody's got any questions, please uh, please feel free to ask before I log off. Thank you. Pedro's looking good. I love his new name. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Hope you've learned something. Aside from what's Spanish for parrot, <laughs> I'll just hold him up there. Actually, I'll just put that there. I'll prop him up. Any questions, anybody? Thank you, Yasmin. No, it is, um. It's a plastic filter part from um, a filter, so like a, um, I don't know exactly, but it's from a DIY store. It's not a stove part, it's, it's plastic, which I painted in a black heavy gesso. Hi, Delena.
so I hope that uh, sort of clears things up. You should, it's plastic, you should be able to find it in your DIY store, like a filter for um, a fan or something. Yeah, basically. Thanks, Carrie, that's, that's what it is, a filter cover. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming. So before I log off, I just want to do a couple of announcements. So, um, next show coming up is a handmade wooden tray with the liner on Thursday, July the 2nd at half past six uh, PT. So, see how she creates a own printer tray using some Prima packaging. So that sounds really, really, really cool, doesn't it? You've got to tune in for that. That sounds fab. Um, and also, just another little announcement: Have you got your June special delivery kit yet? Now these are absolutely fab. They're filled with all sort of like some Prima oldies, but goodies. But they are brim, 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 brim packed to the brim, even of full of Prima loveliness so um go to live with prima.net and to order yours they are fab full of loveliness so hope everybody enjoyed the show tonight and if anybody's got any more questions you do <laughs> there'll be a rush on plastic filter parts tomorrow in the <laughs> home home shops Soon. Right, so no more questions. Okay, so I hope to see you all soon. Thanks for coming and I hope you enjoyed it. Alright, have a great week then. Bye.